Hey guys, we are on chapter eight. There's only eight, nine, ten, only three more chapters left of Civil War on Sunday. Um, yesterday, Jack and Annie helped Clara Barton um, go out and pick up some wounded soldiers, both from the Confederate side and the Union side, um, because they said, hey, you know, if somebody needs help, we're gonna help them, no matter who they are. And um, they also picked up the drummer boy. They picked him up. Chapter eight is titled, Brothers. Clara Barton had turned the wagon around. She helped Jack and Annie lift the drummer boy into the back. The soldiers said that he had heat stroke. Annie told Clara his name is John. And when we said heat stroke um, happens when you get overheated. If you're outside and um, working hard, running around, you get too hot, you don't drink enough water, you can get a heat stroke. For some reason, every time I read about heat stroke, it makes me <laughs> makes me thirsty. Then I have to get some water. Um, the boy lay down next to the sleeping Confederate soldier. He does have heat stroke, Clara said. The other boy also has a high fever. We must get to them to the hospital at once. Can you two stay in the back of the wagon and do as I tell you? Sure, said Jack and Annie. Clara dampened two clean cloths with water from Jack's canteen. Remember the canteen, that's um, kind of like what people used to use as a water bottle. Um, it's a way for you to um, carry water with you. Um, so they stopped at the creek, they filled up their canteens, and now they're using the water from that um, to put on these cloths. Gently press the cloths against their face to help them cool off. So you're gonna take a cool rag and just kind of um, put it on their face. She gave the cloths to Jack and Annie. Then she went to the front of the wagon and climbed in. The wagon started forward. Jack and Annie gently patted the soldiers' faces with the damp cloths. Jack looked at the young men lying side by side. The two seemed far more alike than different. So think about that. They've picked up these two young men. <clears throat> and what do we know about the soldiers that they have in the back? Um, the first one they picked up, Annie noticed, hey, he's not wearing a blue uniform, he's wearing a gray uniform. And that means that he's fighting for the South, the Confederate side. Um, then they pick up the drummer boy and he's wearing a blue uniform. So what do we know about him? He's fighting for the North, um, for the Union side. But other than that, okay, if you take away their uniforms, if they were just wearing jeans and a t-shirt, they look pretty similar, right? They're about the same age. Um, so they're noticing like these boys seem um, like they are pretty similar. They're, they're more alike than they are different. In another time and place, they might have been friends, Jack thought. Finally, the wagon arrived at the field hospital. And remember yesterday we looked at the picture of the tent um, that was part of the real field hospital. The Confederate soldier was put on a stretcher and carried to the tent, the two soldiers wearing bandages put the drummer boy on a stretcher. Could you stay with John a while, Clara Barton, asked Jack and Annie. Sure, said Jack. Try to bring down his fever, Clara said. A nurse will give you ice packs to press against his skin. Find me when his fever is lower. The drummer boy was carried into the empty tent. Jack and Annie followed. Jack was put on a cot, I mean, I'm sorry, John was put on a cot. Then a nurse brought some rags and a bucket filled with ice. Jack and Annie were left alone with the boy. Jack wrapped ice in a rag. He pressed the ice pack against the boy's head and neck and arms. Annie fanned the air to cool Jack off and keep away the flies. <clears throat> so Annie's, you know, kind of fanning him with a book. Jack is just putting the ice packs on him, just trying to get him cooled off. Jack felt so hot, he pressed an ice pack against his own face for a moment. Then he looked up Drummer Boy in his Civil War book. Um, so in Jack's knapsack, which is like his backpack, he is keeping um, his journal, his notebook where he takes notes, and his Civil War book, the book that ultimately got him here, the book where they opened it up, pointed at the picture, and whoosh, there they were. So he's got that book in his knapsack. So he opens up Civil, his Civil War book, and he's looking up a drummer boy to try to figure out um, what this kid's job is. 
The Civil War was the last war to use drummer boys. The drum beat was used to give orders to soldiers. Different beats told them when to eat, how to march, and even how to fight. On smoky battlefields, the boys drumming helped soldiers find one another and keep together. So they did not have um, cell phones. You couldn't text your buddy on the other side of the field um, to let him know that it was time to eat, let him know that you see something. Um, you can't text him. Um, it's smoky, so um, you may not be able to, to see any kind of signals, but you can hear the drum beat. So they're using that. Um, so you know when you hear a certain beat, you know what that means. When you hear the drummer playing a certain drum beat, you're like, okay, this this means it's time to march. This means it's time to do um, this formation. So that's what they're they're listening for. Wow, said Jack. He closed the book and pulled out his notebook and wrote, drummer boy, really important job. So he makes that note in his book, drummer boy, really important job. Suddenly John shouted. Jack looked up from his notebook. The drummer boy was still asleep, but he was waving his arms as if he were having a nightmare. Annie shook the boy's arm. Wake up, John, she said. You're okay, wake up. The drummer boy opened his eyes. You were having a bad dream, said Annie. You're safe now. You'll see your family again soon. No, no, the boy said. He sounded frantic. I have to go back to the battlefield. No, you don't have to fight anymore, said Annie. You can go home and be safe. No, said the boy. They need me. They need my drum. He sounded more and more upset. Jack thought about their list. Remember the list? Um that the nurse gave them with some instructions, like be cheerful, be brave. One of the other things that the list said is put aside your own feelings. Okay, John, said Jack, you can go back as soon as you feel better. Jack, said Annie, he'll get hurt or killed. I'm afraid for him. Me too, Jack said softly, but we have to put our own feelings aside. That's one of the things on our list. Annie sighed. <sighs> okay, she said sadly. She looked at John. If you want to fight again in the Civil War, you can, if that's what you really want. Thank you, the boy whispered. You know, you're the bravest kid I've ever met, Jack said. So here they are talking to John. So this boy, who looks very young, um, he knows, I mean, this is dangerous, but he feels like his job is really important. So... He knows, yes, um, you know, I might get hurt, I might even get killed, but if I'm not out there, if I'm not out there giving them the signals with my drum, how are they going to know what to do? And a lot of people might get hurt. So he has to be brave, put his own feelings aside, and go back out there and do it. The drummer boy smiled at Jack. <clears throat> he looked just like my little brother, he said hoarsely. You look just like my big brother, said Jack, except I don't have a big brother. I don't have any brothers. The three of them laughed. The drummer boy's laugh was very soft. The boy laid his head back on his pillow and closed his eyes again. In a moment, he was sleeping peacefully. A smile was on his lips. Annie felt his forehead. His fever's gone down, she said. We should go tell Clara. Annie left the tent. Jack got up and slowly followed her. When he reached the entrance of the tent, he turned and looked back. The shadows of twilight fell across the boy's calm, sleeping face. It was strange. Jack hardly knew the drummer boy, but he felt that they could be brothers. Have you ever felt a connection like that with someone? Um, maybe you've just met them, but you, you feel a connection. You feel like you've known them for a long time, or as soon as you meet them, you feel like you could be um, instantly best friends or... Um, in this case, he feels like they could be brothers. Listen to the cannon fire in the distance. Jack was a listening to the cannon fire in the distance. Jack was afraid for the boy. Will he live to see his family again? Jack wondered. Good luck, John, Jack said softly. With a heavy heart, Jack stepped out into the warm evening air. So, um, what does that mean with a heavy heart? What does it mean if your heart feels heavy? Have you ever heard that expression? Um, that means that, um, he's feeling sad. He's feeling worried. He doesn't feel great about this decision, but he knows that it's what needs to be done. So he's doing it, even though, um, he doesn't feel good about it. He's, he's going to do it anyway. He's going to let, um, 
John go back out because John knows that's what he has to do. He might get hurt, he might get killed, but his job is really important. And um, by doing his job, he can save a lot of other people. So today, um, in your packet, you have a worksheet that says chapter eight at the top, and it says the drummer boy played a very important role during the Civil War, keeping the soldiers organized. Do you think the outcome of the Civil War would have been the same if there had not been any drummer boys? So I want you to do some writing there. Um, it can be just a couple of sentences, but I want you to say outcome means would it have turned out the same way? Um, so would the Civil War have turned out the same way if there had not been any drummer boys? Um, and you can say why or why not, why you feel that way. Um, so do some writing um, and then I want you to share your thoughts um, with me tomorrow. Okay, very good. So we have two more chapters and we'll be done. See ya.